morning to one and all present here. Today we are going to discuss about lipids. What are lipids? Before discuss in detail, we should know what are lipids. Lipids are organic substances which is made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And in today's class, uh, we are going to discuss about the definition of lipids, then classification of lipids, fatty acids and its types, properties of fatty acids, physical and chemical. When you take this lipids, lipids are organic substances which are sparingly soluble or relatively insoluble in water and in which solvent it will be dissolved. It will be dissolved only in organic solvents like alcohol, ether, benzene, chloroform etc. And lipids are said to be heterogeneous group of compounds. What is meant by that? Heterogeneous group of compounds which means Lipids are organic compounds containing carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. In addition, it contains some more special functional groups like phosphate, nucleic acid, lipids, polysaccharides, etc. Hence, they are called heterogeneous group of compounds. Next, it is a chief concentrated source of energy. Normally, when you consume food, it has to be digested within stomach with the help of different groups of enzymes during which some amount of energy is released and after it gets assimilated in the blood the remaining energy has to be stored in the form of lipids in the liver so they are said to be the concentrated source of energy besides this they have several important roles like cellular structure it is a component of cell membrane like plasma membrane and other membranes and various other biological functions what are the functions uh, which performed by the lipids will be discussed later and they are said to be the polymers mostly small molecules they are not larger polymers instead they are in the form of small molecules Coming to classification, so hope you understand what are lipids. Lipids are organic compounds with different groups of compounds combined together. Hence it is said to be a heterogeneous group of compounds. So when you take this classification, the classification of lipids shows that it has three different types. Simple lipids, complex lipids and derived lipids. When you take the simple lipids, the name itself gives us an idea about the type of lipids. So since it's said to be a simple lipid, it is an ester of fatty acid with alcohol. So normally the alcohol is glycerol. And simple lipids have two more subtypes like fats and oils and waxes. What are these fats and oils? Fats and oils are again esters of fatty acids with alcohol that is glycerol. But that should be a difference between a fat and oil. Fat is a solid substance and oil is a liquid. And the second subtype of simple lipid is waxes. They are made up of esters of long chain fatty acids with alcohol but other than glycerol. Waxes do not contain a glycerol instead it contains some other alcohol so that is the chief difference between the two subtypes of simple lipids fats and oils and waxes coming to the complex lipids they are the esters of fatty acids with alcohol that is glycerol in addition it has some special groups like phosphate nitrogen bases carbohydrates and proteins so based on these special groups, complex lipids have been further categorized into phospholipids, glycolipids, lipoproteins and other complex lipids. What's meant by phospholipids? Phospholipids, in addition to the fatty acids and glycerol, it has phosphate. So it has been named as phospholipids. Phospholipids are further subdivided into glycero 
phospholipid and sphingophospholipid based on the presence of an alcohol called glycerol in case of glycerophospholipid and sphingocyne in sphingophospholipid. Coming to the glycolipid, when some percentage of carbohydrate is associated with lipid, then it has been named as glycolipid which comes under complex lipids. A third one is lipoprotein. Lipids are associated with proteins. So this lipids, when associated with proteins, it forms lipoproteins. So these lipoproteins are the major constituents of almost all types of cellular membranes. And the last type of complex lipids are all the different groups of lipids are combined and put it in this category as other complex lipids like sulfolipids, amino lipids and lipopolysaccharides. Sulfolipids means the sulfur group when it gets associated with lipids hence it has been named as sulfolipids. Coming to the amino lipids, amino acids are joined together with lipids to form amino lipids and lipopolysaccharides. Lipids get associated with polysaccharides to form lipopolysaccharides. The third class or third type of lipids are derived lipids. There is no separate group as derived lipids. Instead, when simple lipid and complex lipids undergo hydrolysis, the derivatives of such hydrolysis brings about a special group of lipids called derived lipids. So, the hydrolyzed product of simple and complex lipids form this derived lipids. At the same time, it possesses all the characteristics of lipids. For example, steroids, hormones, ketone bodies are said to be the best example for derived lipids. So, there are three different types as simple lipid, complex lipids and derived lipids. Besides these types, there are two more subtypes. They are miscellaneous lipids and neutral lipids. Miscellaneous lipids, all the lipids, that is all group of compounds which possess the same characteristics of lipids. They are put together as miscellaneous. If the very good example for miscellaneous lipids are carotenoids and squalene. The last type is called neutral lipids. This neutral lipids brings about a special group known as neutral which means it doesn't carry any charge. So, they are named as neutral lipids. It is nil charge. Example, cholesterol, cholesterol, esters, etc. Coming to the functions, functions of lipids. So, there are a lot of uh, functions performed by these lipids within a cell. First of all, it, it is treated as a fuel reserve of the body, which means all the remaining energy can be stored in the form of lipid and these lipids are said to be the concentrated fuel. When a person is in a starved conditions, these fuel reserves have been utilized by the metabolic activity of the body and it releases energy which will be utilized for other activities. Then, constituents of membrane structure and regulate membrane permeability. As I told you earlier, these are the constituents of membrane structure because you know very well that membranes are made up of lipids and proteins. So lipid bilayer is formed by these lipids uh, which can be associated with membrane to form the constituents of membrane structure. Without lipids and proteins there is no membrane at all and it also regulates membrane permeability. You know very well about the semi-permeability of plasma membrane. So the semi-permeability of plasma membrane is because of the presence of these lipids. So it uh, has a major role in cell structure and functions. And the next function is it serves as a source of fat soluble vitamins. You know very well there are two different groups of vitamins as fat soluble vitamins and water soluble vitamins. So when you take this fat soluble vitamins like A, D, E and K, it needs fat for its activity because the vitamins need these fat or lipid for its functions.
to make them activated and it has to be uh, solubilized only in the presence of fat. They are said to be fat soluble vitamins. And the last function is important cellular metabolic regulators. You know very well about the hormones like steroid hormones and prostaglandins. These are the two examples besides there are a lot of examples. So they perform uh, various metabolic activity and they can take part in all types of anabolism and catabolism. So these lipids are treated as a very good cellular metabolic regulators. So it performs different functions. Coming to the fatty acids. So lipids are the esters of fatty acids with alcohol or glycerol. So coming to this fatty acids, what are fatty acids? They are also carboxylic acids with hydrocarbon side chains. They are also carboxylic acids with special hydrocarbon side chains. It has 2 to 36 carbon as a carbon side chain and more than 200 fatty acids are isolated from higher and lower plants. Because all higher and lower plants, almost all plants contain these different uh, fatty acids. And there are different types of fatty acids which can be categorized as major fatty acids, minor fatty acids, unusual fatty acids and essential fatty acids. So what are major fatty acids and why do we call so? Major fatty acids, they are definitely either saturated or unsaturated with an unbranched carbon side chain. So it definitely it is saturated and sometimes it may be unsaturated. Hope you know that what is saturation and unsaturation. With an unbranched carbon side chain, it doesn't have any branched chain as side chain. And all the major, major fatty acids are very essential or uh, it needs in maximum quantity. So they are said to be major fatty acids. Next is minor fatty acids. Minor fatty acids found in almost all types of foodstuffs and body tissues. Minor fatty acids doesn't need a lot and they may be usually saturated. So uh, minor fatty acids are are not unsaturated, they are usually saturated. Uh, fatty acid composition of cow and goat's milk have a high concentration of high content of short and medium chain saturated fatty acids. So this fatty acid composition of cow's milk, uh, we know that cow's milk contain an appreciable amount of lipid or fat that is made up of short and medium chain saturated fatty acids. Coming to the unusual fatty acids, what is meant by unusual? Unusual means it is not found in each and every plants and animals. Instead, it is very peculiar. It is present in some of the group of plants. Some groups of plants alone contain the special group of fatty acids. Hence, they are named as unusual fatty acids. It is found only in very few individual species. Uh, castor seed oil and rape seed oil. Castor seed oil, Ricinus communis, is the botanical name of the plant, and rape seed oil, Brassica napus. So these two uh, has ricin, oleic acid, and erucic acid. These two are the two fatty acids found in these two uh, plants. Hence, they are named as unusual fatty acids. The last is essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids are normally required uh, for human growth and sustainment. The human body requires these essential fatty acids but uh, the body is unable to synthesize these fatty acids. But how can we get this? It has to be supplied through diet. So if we can get these essential fatty acids from our diet. A very good example for essential fatty acids are linoleic acid and linolinic acid. These two fatty acids are just an example. There are a lot of essential fatty acids uh, which require for human body growth and sustainment. Next is functions. Functions of fatty acids. Like lipids, it plays a vital role in membrane structure. Being a fat or being a lipid, definitely it has a special role in membrane structure 
functions and transport of cholesterol from the liver to other part then formation of lipoproteins which are very essential for membrane building so uh, formation of lipoproteins then prevention of fatty liver as I told you this fatty liver is a very complex one when too much of food is taken what happens the remaining energy has been stored in the form of lipid within the liver so once the liver started accumulating large amount of fat it results in the formation of a thing called fatty liver so this fatty liver is a serious problem because the persons who are suffering from fatty liver cannot digest lipids and it is needed for the synthesis of eicosanoids which is needed lipids are required lipids are needed for the synthesis of eicosanoids which have a special role in metabolism so these are said to be the special functions of fatty acids is there any queries about these fatty acids lipids etc thank you